Last week on Glee Boot, Kurt experienced gay bashing, Rachel quit Niata without consulting Tina, and Sam Sadie's became official. And that's what you missed on Glee Boot. Yes, they officially became official. So exciting. Very much is. Been waiting for this. Glee Boot. Welcome back to Glee Boot, the show where we get drunk and talk about rebooting Glee one episode at a time. I'm Cullen. Alyssa. Hannah, thoughts and prayers, is in airport hell. Um, oh, she's no. on a plane. She should be on a plane right now, but I'm pretty sure Lord, what I, I know, she, is. she was supposed to have left like yesterday. Um, yeah. Oh my God. So, Stuck in the airport overnight for an entire day sounds like uh, terrible. It sounds terrible. I hate that. I so, really hate that for her. They, um, yes, they'll probably have been done with that by the time this episode is out, but they'll still need your thoughts and prayers because that damages a person. You can't come back from that. You can't. And it's uh, the person who has been speaking is uh, our guest friend of the podcast, <laughs> the Barry Shipper, Brittany. Hello. Thank you so much for having me back. Welcome. To be here. Uh, what an what an episode to discuss today. I think the last <laughs> time I was here was like the first inkling of Faberi, and now we just have a whole lot of <laughs> New York nonsense going on. <laughs> yep. Yeah, uh, I don't know if you heard, but at one point a few episodes ago, I was like, you know, I think I finally get Faberi because now yeah. that Finn is gone, really, I feel like the only person for these women is each other because none of the love interests they've been getting are like worthwhile absolutely not puck biff brody bottom of the barrel let's be honest sam although he does get he did okay in this episode he was not a terrible person sam has been like on a rocky road (laughs) he's on a rocky road though i feel like he 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 trends towards positive yes yes Yes, like he tries and that counts for something yeah he's he's like finn 2.0 right like he is yeah Mm -hmm. you know and by like ohio midwestern boy 19 standards he he does it he functions um (laughs) he functions he functions um i think some of the shit i said at that age so i'm like "Mm." uh (laughs) you remember stuff you said when you yes. were 19? Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> right? All, all I will say about my 19th year is that I was unironically into Glee because that is the year that it premiered. So I feel like that says a lot about a person. <laughs> also, Suki is uh, licking herself in the background. She is on full display. <laughs> um, and uh, big podcast update um Alyssa and I have both moved to new apartments yes separate new apartments apartments. yeah no we're just renting (laughs) two new apartments together um yeah so I it's you know I need this Suzuki content um just I mean but I I won't have to deal with her hair as much because I'm sure her hair is in some of my things but oh yes for <laughs> she sure. loves my closet yeah you're never getting rid of cat hair yeah um but oh Suki um pretending to like me when your owner was gone I'll miss that <laughs> um, so you know we've we know Britney's glee journey um from original song that was the episode Britney was on in season mm-hmm. two Oh my gosh, we didn't know how good we had it. Um, Oh oh my God. So uh, we know their Glee character, Glee boyfriend, I guess. I don't remember them, but I'm sure you can look them up. Um, But I retook both the tests. You did. Oh my gosh. I did. What are 2022 Britney's test results? So it changed. I remembered originally I got Finn for both. Oh my gosh. Uh, which is like the reason I remembered it because that was really weird. But 2022, Brittany, uh, I I am Quinn Fabray 
and Artie Abrams is my boyfriend, which is a little bit dangerous given the context of this episode that we're discussing today. Uh, but I thought it was a very interesting evolution of Finn to Quinn. Yeah, and Finn it's to like Artie. One is Finn to Quinn is arguably you could argue an upgrade or at least a lateral. You know. I, am much happier i i'm a big quinn like yeah. stan so i'm much happier with this result but like finn to Artie is is a downgrade yeah that's definitely down yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah so what are we drinking today i'm drinking a gin and juice because i haven't had time to go to the store but i had orange juice and i had gin End of story. (laughs) I love that. (laughs) Yeah, my fridge literally, Rafa was like, you have a frat boy's fridge. Like, because it's just truly tequila, (laughs) hard seltzer, and like this strawberry thing. Yeah. And you don't like, you don't buy normal food because your job provides it for you. (laughs) Yes. Though now... I will have to start grocery shopping because I'm not the only one because like we're, we will share food um, as a couple. Oh, you're going to share food. Yeah. But then I don't have to buy food on the weekends. I'd rather go that so then I can eat snacks and stuff without being like, oh, those are yours, those are mine, you know? Yeah, that's a better way to go. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I'm drinking a like Jameson, like a cold brew Jameson. It's Jameson infused with cold brew coffee that I got at the Super Bowl and uh, just also did not have time to go shopping to get White Claw. So is it good? It is. Yeah. It's actually really delicious. Mm. Yeah. It's good. I have to stock up on all of my liquors and my mixers and, and wine and anything else that I want to drink. I'm going to be working a whole lot of overtime and I feel like you I'm going to be dealing with that overtime in unhealthy ways. <laughs> <laughs> Embrace it. Yes. <laughs> I just, just hear like the Hillary Duff, like let the rain fall down and you're just like embracing the overtime. <laughs> Instead of rain. Uh, tequila and vodka. <laughs> Although I do imagine that this is going to be actually like good money. So, yeah. 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 And I just got a race. So. You did. Oh, oh my I God. Got the yeah. race. I got the race. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Oh um, so I will raise Brittany this question. Yes. Um, have you listened to any season five Glee Boot episodes? It is okay if you haven't, but our next segment may or may not be a surprise based on. I have not. Okay, we have a Smash Mary Kill section now. Oh, let's <laughs> go. <laughs> um, our our theme this week is virgins. Oh boy. Apropos. We have Jane the Virgin. Ooh. We have Marley Rose. Oh, Marley. And we have Daphne Bridgerton. Who, I mean, Jane, even Jane, Jane and Daphne are not virgins for the entire runtime of their series. Correct. But they're, it's like a, it's like a plot point. Like, it's so, a, yeah. It's a plot point. And I would also argue like a key part of their identity, right? Which is what yeah. makes it a plot point. Is that mm-hmm. it? Um, I don't like this. I don't want to hurt any of them. I know Which this one is one of the Daphne? few ones where I would be okay with any of the results. Daphne's the main girl in season one of Bridgerton. Yeah. And then oh, she, okay. Yeah. Spoiler alert, she has a baby in season two. So she's not a virgin. Big surprise. So I mean, <laughs> we, we knew that she was not a virgin before the end of season one. <laughs> Yeah, I think halfway through. <laughs> yeah, halfway through. Um, okay. So, so I think, do I know enough about Marley to make this decision? I mean, I will go with, I will probably marry Jane. 
yeah. with hopes that her insane life does not subsume me into it and I don't like have to die and then come back from the dead or something. Right. Um, and then uh, the co-parenting thing, that's going to be a challenge, but we, we, I'm up for it. Um, <laughs> and then I, I'd smash Daphne. Okay. And I guess I'll kill Marley. I don't dislike her. Um, but she's the most boring. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Like, she's the one I care the least about. And I'm like, I don't really want to smash, don't really want to marry. But also, I feel bad killing her. Like, she doesn't deserve that. She's not like a terrible character, but she is the worst version of the archetype we're talking about. True. Like, the boring, like, the character that's good, so they're boring. Like, yeah. not all good characters are boring, but when people are thinking of characters that are, like, goody-goody and therefore boring, like, Marley is one that would come up. Yeah. I feel like Daphne would make a great wife because that's literally, like, her character, right? Yeah, that's what she was raised to do. Yeah, and I feel like Jane would be a fun time, so I, I might smash Jane and marry Daphne. I think I have the same answer. Marry Daphne, mm -hmm. smash Jane, kill Marley. Mm -hmm. um yeah Daphne intrigues me I think that's why yeah she's intriguing and and to Cullen's point uh I think marrying Jane is just inviting a lot of chaos <laughs> and stressful and or harmful situations at least not the first season of that okay. show so i mean it's still <laughs> just in the first season that's in rostro and True. there is a lot of stuff that happens yeah i barely Milo's... remember it but it is a little crazy yeah it, it gets a lot crazy i never finished that show <laughs> what Partly because, you know, I was unhappy with some shipping choices that were being made. Um, okay. If you're going to sink my ship by murdering my character, don't make them come back to sink the ship again. That's what I'm saying. I accepted it. I moved on. Don't make me, you know. Don't get your hopes up again. Don't get my hopes up again. Which, crazy I am with a Raphael now. And when I was dating Raphael, I was also dating a Michael. Interesting. Yeah. So you are Jane the Virgin. I'm Jane the Virgin. <laughs> I was a virgin at the time, too. Yeah. And you're going to marry a Jane. <laughs> Incredible. So, okay. Full circle. Full circle moment. But let's talk about Tested, an episode called that because the Lord is testing me. <laughs> The Lord is testing <laughs> everyone. So season yeah. five has been a ride, but is this the worst episode of it? Maybe. It's it in the might be. I'm not going to say 100% for sure, but if I had to think of the worst episode of season five, Tested is coming up. It is no Puppet Master. True. Which in some weird way might be my favorite episode of the season. <laughs> Puppet Master was season five. Yeah. So many things have happened. You know, and like, I, it's Glee. It's that it's valid more than ever in season five because this is the most disjointed season. Like, oh yeah, I was gonna be like, this is filler, but I'm like, what is it? Like, filler implies that there's a main plot that you're distracting <laughs> from. Like, I don't know what is happening. Mm. <laughs> It's like the show doesn't know what to do when it's not like, oh, we have to qualify for regionals and nationals. Like, how do yeah. you? Yeah, know? like, like that got repetitive, but it, it provided some structure. Like it was the point of the show. Yeah, exactly. Whereas now no. it's like half of them are, they're in like New York, I guess, doing their thing, but they're all doing different things, but kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. I will say, uh, and because uh, this this show is no longer on Netflix, I didn't like watch things coming up to this, so I apologize. But uh, I was watching this episode and was like, huh, Rachel's not annoying and not super self-centered. Like she's a normal person for the very few lines of dialogue that she has. And I commend this episode for that. That is true. That is true, yeah. 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 It's probably because she doesn't have an A, B, or C plotline, but you know what? She, 
her she was a little annoying in her last storyline, but overall it was actually a pretty good storyline for her. It was her choosing between Broadway and Niada. It was like good stakes, you know. Yeah. Like you could see both options, you know, like so I think um we're we're in a Rachel Renaissance, I guess. Oh cool. I, yeah, I think from what I remember of like Rachel in New York, she's a lot better than Rachel in high school. Uh, not always not always there were some times where i was like you're you're being a diva starting the last episode maybe yeah i'm gonna say that in bash tested and next week opening night Mm -hmm. i'm gonna say rich is gonna have an okay character for those yeah from what i do know uh the backup plan following opening night that character will crash and burn <laughs> oh no. i was gonna say oh. <laughs> don't like, get used to liking rachel oh no <laughs> i'm so excited Alyssa. you'll have to let me know your reaction because <laughs> it's so bad it's an oh, assassination man. attempt as this character assassination that goes against four and almost five seasons of character like, not really development but like establishment of like what we know about this character yes. are you serious okay well yeah. i guess we'll find out in the next uh three weeks two weeks so the the plot lines are um stds stis are being discussed uh through the lens of Artie um and a weird opener (laughs) (laughs) um we also have uh the destruction of the clay ship the descent into a toxic cesspool that should no longer be and arguably an assassination of blaine's character um really ruining yeah really ruining that character um he he says some problematic stuff uh throughout this episode yeah and then we have sam sadies um which is like the the normal storyline <laughs> so, yeah. like i feel like mostly episodes tend to have one storyline that's like okay i guess this is the functioning one <laughs> um but yeah let's start with Artie in the opener um, so we get this like black and white New York sailor. I mean, it's giving me vibes of that New York, New York movie mm-hmm. uh, where they're all sailors and it's black and white. That's what I know about it. <laughs> that is a movie? <laughs> okay. Yeah, they, they mashed up the main song from that movie with Madonna's I Love New York mm-hmm. in the season two season finale. Mm-hmm. I had That's- no idea. I had no idea. We discussed it then, but yes. Um, uh, that's where the number where Madonna rhymes York with dork. And I want to ask her about that if I ever meet her. <laughs> you should. Who did that? I just have one question for you, yeah. Madonna. <laughs> one question. York with dork. <laughs> Who's responsible? Who's what responsible? happened? <laughs> um okay um so yeah it's this opener and they're like there may be a threat to the america in your trousers desktop g5 boot 87 <laughs> what was that alexa <laughs> alexa it's alexa sorry um, i accidentally unplugged my headphones and then she took over nice they're like and you just because you're uh a handsome idiot uh uh, invalid uh like a homosexual debonair or uh a debonair homosexual or yeah and And they called kurt like a a strapping male soprano yeah uh doesn't mean you don't have to worry about it and it's like go get tested this really felt like some kind of PSA that came from the network that was like, hey, we need to have a conversation about the dangers of STIs. Talk about it in glee. And this is what we got. 
It was very, very strange. I mean, it was like they were all in sailor suits, like they like they were planning on or had already joined the armed forces. And I was like, all right, like I can see you're trying to go for um what was that? The 20s? Mm. It, it felt like 20s? Yeah, it felt like a World War II, like GI, yeah. like kind of how like naval soldiers are known naval soldiers sailors i don't know how like folks in the navy are known for like getting off like a girl in every port and so i know stis were actually like a legitimate problem within Is the that navy why okay sailors were also known to be horny with each other <laughs> yes um <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> but <laughs> but so yeah that's the vibe i got where they're like ah they're leaning into this even though three of the four men in that scene are in like committed relationships. Like, why not? Um, yeah. Guess, it's, yeah. It's like, they're like, they're like, okay, throw out ideas. You have to talk about SGIs. And I was like, oh my gosh, we could do like some weird black and white, like promo. And someone's like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I mean, the thing is it, it wasn't that bad. I guess it was like, okay, <laughs> like this makes no sense, but it was just weird. I'm still watching Glee, like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was super weird, and, like, Glee is a comedy, but they sort of, uh, like, already lambasted their own message. Like, it was a joke before they even put it in the episode. Yeah. So, that's a choice. It's a choice. And I guess, you know, it is good to think about like getting tested. I know like Kurt later mentions like, oh, we haven't gotten tested since this incident happened. Like, I guess that is a good thing for couples to think about. Yeah, they haven't got it, tested since, uh, I'm pretty sure it's a reference to when Blaine slept with the lighthouse guy. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm probably probably should have gotten tested immediately but then like there's not enough there's not a lot of, a lot of depth to it so like i love crazy ex-girlfriend and there's a song in there where they're like you need to like get tested and then wait six months because a lot of people don't know that there's a window where you can like test negative even though you have it mm-hmm. anyway not to plug mm-hmm. a different show on glee boot but we do it all the time we do that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it was so, weird. so yeah, whatever it was that happened. So now Artie's at film school and he's like, I'm super hot and popular and everyone wants to be like me and people love my sweaters. And he's like, and that means I can just like sleep with all these women. And they have this like mean girl style thing where like the women are like talking about Artie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, we have the ginger girl and she's all like I loved his feature and I knew I wanted to sit with him not his feature his short um and then uh we had like kind of the alternative girl um and then we had like the girl he's really in love with who's narrating his plastic bag floating in the wind a la American Beauty uh film and like, it is kind of funny how they make fun of film school because I'm yes. sure some of those people in the writer's room went to film school. So like, there's, yeah, people do that stuff. So that was kind of funny. Oh, yeah. I feel like I had flashbacks to like our program and the way people would talk about scripts. And... Oh my gosh, someone was talking about the deer hunter yesterday. Oh my God, no. Mm. Triggered. Like, oh, the 70s, the golden age of movies. And well, oh. well, you know, while as a survivor of the multiverse of madness, I would say our current cinema isn't in the best shape. Don't get me would started. Would I say 70s is the best? I don't know. 80s? I would not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't think I'd, I could, you could convince me of the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
and even even into like the early 90s but don't get don't get me started on the assassination of wanda uh, it's almost That's... as bad as the assassination of blaine and as i said yes on our tiktok and on our episodes tina should have been in multiverse of madness it would have been better yes give jenna ushkowitz work um because literally every white male actor is in the mcu at some point so why not tina like why not yeah they were paint in one universe why can't we have tina yeah um way more interesting than dr strange has been or will ever been Okay, but back back to Tested. Um, so Artie is kind of like, but this is a girl I really like. She's she's giving me like 2000s, like pre-Manic Pixie Dream Girl. We're not fully in 500 Days of Summer, but like mm-hmm. we're on our way there. You know, that's her kind of character. Like, I feel like it's looking for Alaska, but more yeah. like, vir- but more virginal instead of I'm going to smoke until I die. Yes. Oh. Wait, wait, are you talking about the girl that already has a crush on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I have no basis for any of these comparisons. I just want to <laughs> say that I hated Paper Towns, the movie. Uh, yeah, I didn't watch any of the John Green adaptation films. Yeah, Paper Towns does have Cara Delevingne, who I liked in yes. Carnival Row. Very nice. Where, where Orlando Bloom was like, you didn't fairy come this time. Great scene. Yes. Um, okay. So he likes this girl, whatever, but he's gonna sleep with these other girls. You know, I I, don't, I just so he I don't what song does he sing? Let me uh, he sings "Addicted to Love." Oh yeah, yeah. I I made I took notes. Yeah, because so time around. Addicted to love. Yeah, I all the only song that could come up in my brain was "Love Is My Drug." <laughs> or your love also is my drug. fits. <laughs> also works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a snooze cover. Hated it hated what was going on it was just like okay he's gonna sleep with these girls okay great why what is the impetus behind them getting tested again um it's because sam and mercedes haven't had sex yet oh and he wants to give her a clean bill of health right because nothing turns a girl on like a negative sti test well (laughs) yep (laughs) <laughs> responsible it is responsible it is very responsible i will give him props for that yeah um, so yes yeah, so they all get tested and Artie finds out he has chlamydia it's got to clap um and he is like he's he feels like He's sitting there and he feels like he's disgusting and he sees himself in this giant STI costume and Halloween inspiration, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's just like, oh, and he like hears in every scene, he's like keeps hearing people say, uh, yeah. Uh, well, like, like normal <laughs> sentences get turned into words that have everything to do with STIs, like, like pus and yeah. Yep. And then um, he goes, like, he's, he tells them, he's like, guys, there's something to tell you. And he's like, you know, I tested positive. And they're like, oh my gosh. And like, like well, everyone tell- freaked out. I loved Sam's reaction, to be honest. <laughs> well, because they're like, you have to tell who you slept with. And he's like, which girl? And Sam's like, what? And he's like, you're a slut. <laughs> I'm slut shaming you, Army. Or Artie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat people's so like, army hammer he's not uh, yes. <laughs> actual cannibal Artie abrams <laughs> um, but he's like i'm just letting you Artie. he's like i don't even know you anymore he's like putting i love that he like, yeah, washed his hands and later there's another great callback when he tells mercedes like 
don't touch him. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I didn't like I liked the first scene of the reaction where he's like, I'm sludging him, you already, but like the don't touch him thing, I was kind of like, just made me give me like AIDS kind of. Yeah, that the vibe totally. was not great. Um, I was kind of like, okay, yeah, it's the problem that the risk when you run that you run with like these dumb characters is they can be really funny, but like ignorance can have real world and like take it too far. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where it's like, ooh, okay. Too um, far. Too far. Yeah. And so, but they're like, well, do you use condoms? And Artie's like, no. And Blaine's just like, well, that would be why. <laughs> yep. <laughs> And I'm like, I guess it's Ohio. He probably didn't get the best sex education. He like, definitely... why aren't you using condoms? Like, those girls could have gotten pregnant. Like, yes, they could be Literally, on birth Blaine control. said that. Yeah. He was like, what would you do if they got pregnant? And I was like, like you had, like, not necessarily a close friend, but like a someone who you were around with a lot was pregnant in high school. Right. Like, you saw her get kicked out because of a baby. Like I feel like you would start, you would put that together. Like you like that would impact you enough to be like, oh, I should practice safe sex. Well, and you'd think those girls would also be like, where's a condom? Yeah, because mm-hmm. he's like he talks about like he went to go buy them and he didn't know what he wanted or like he was confused and behind the glass counter and I will say the first time I bought condoms um I did not use them the night that I bought them um but I just thought I might um so I uh randomly just kind of walked in and was like yeah I want that yeah <laughs> um yeah so you're like you have to tell these girls so Artie's feeling gross he's feeling like a giant STD he tells Ginger I don't remember her name, which is sad because this this these women deserve more dignity than the show gives them. But I guess someone else will have to give it to them. Uh, but she like freaks out. She's like, oh, yeah. I have to find a clinic. You're disgusting. Like that's so gross. I'm gonna have warts on my face. Yeah, it's like that's weird. And I'm and she. I think she's like, I'm gonna tell everyone that you're gross, so they stay away from you. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people would react that way. Um, but, like, girls don't have sex with him without using condoms, so, like... Right. I had to tell myself multiple times throughout, like, all of these storylines, like, they're 19. These are not adults. Their brains are still forming. <laughs> like Yes. <laughs> yeah, despite... Despite the show, I think would have, if it was going to go this route, would have benefited from a time jump. They did not all elect to do a time jump. Yes. Um, so these are 19 year olds. Um, and then, um, and then he talks to the other girl and she's like, okay, I'll just I'll go, go to get the tested. clinic. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting me know. You know? And she was like, maybe I gave it to you. And I'm like, yeah. how many, how many like men are you sleeping with without <laughs> condoms? Great. 19, 19. <laughs> So whatever. And then he, then Julie comes up and it's like, I want to go on a date with you. Cause he asked her out earlier and she had a very mm-hmm. smart policy. Yeah. Of, I don't go out with people I'm working with. <laughs> Although I thought it was a little bit strange because they're just doing like a class project together and not actually working together. True. Yeah. Um, maybe she's practicing. Yeah, that could be. And I I feel like especially in film school, like you do get like very involved in one another's projects like all the time. So I I feel like that could be a good call for school as well. You know, it's how I met Alyssa's mom. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when I fell in love with Hannah and she was the tarot card reader. Yes. I mean, (laughs) I also fell in love in one of Alyssa's music videos. I fall in love all the time, Colin. <laughs> I'm falling in love. Uh, I made Britney play Marie Antoinette. <laughs> I loved that. Um, yeah. So, what a time. Um, but yeah. So she she's like, yeah, I do want to go out with you, Artie. So then Artie's freaking out, um, and he like 
they go to dinner and he keeps hearing pus and stuff and Kurt's <laughs> dialogue. And he's yeah. like, hey, I really like where this is going. And she's like, yeah. And he's like, uh, but can we not have sex for seven to 10 days? And she was just like, I mean, considering this date started an hour ago, I wasn't really <laughs> thinking about having sex. Like, how presumptuous, like, how yep. much of a playboy has already become that he was like, obviously, this chick's going to have sex with me tonight. Like, yeah, like, I get if it's going there and you're like, hey, I can't. Um, yeah. But, like, yeah, just out of the gate. <laughs> she had a very normal reaction, too. She was just kind of like, yeah. um, okay, like... And so he was just like, seven to 10 days. He was like, yeah, I'll wait. That was weird. And then, so Mercedes and Sam have their storyline going on. And then uh, they're singing, let's wait a while. Mercedes just starts singing it on the, on like the, the river. Um, I, this song was so boring for me. It was so boring. The music, oh, not good this afternoon. No, no. And then, so like she's singing, Sam singing, Artie singing, and this girl is so uncomfortable. <laughs> she's like, she is like, it's like she's the one character in this universe. She's like a glitch that yeah. like she doesn't realize they're in a musical universe. So she's just like, okay, well, everyone else is acting like this is normal, but like, what is happening? And then like eventually. They're all singing, and like you know, she did not go to the recording studio. She did not record a track, but she's just kind of lip syncing, but like, yeah, very confusedly. Like, I guess I'm singing. I'm just gonna go along. <laughs> Definitely, Artie is not getting laid now because she's freaked out. Like, oh it's, yeah, it's just so. The character hierarchy is so funny in this show because it's just like, yes, we know Julie's not going to be around because they didn't hire someone who could sing. She's mm-hmm. not getting a number. She's just, we'll kind of shoe her, shoehorn her in to this other number. Yeah. Um, it was so funny. That was actually, that was, that's what yeah. I paid attention to the whole time. Peak comedy is the, <laughs> the straight character. <laughs> yes. Um, and then uh so then the next day at school, Artie comes up to her and he's like, Hey, I need to talk to you. She's like, Is it about how our date was super weird? Um, and he's like, I have chlamydia. And she is kind of like, she's like, she's not mad that he has chlamydia. She's just, he's, cause she's kind of like, well, who did you get it from? And he's like, well, I slept with so-and-so and so-and-so. And she's like, you slept with all those girls. <laughs> they thought this project was good. They're dumb. They're a bunch yeah. of dumb sluts. And I, you're not the man I thought you were. Yeah. Which is also such a film school response. Like they liked this movie. Are you kidding me? Yes. <laughs> you know, here's the, okay. I could see her being like, oh, like you're not who I thought you were. Like I thought you were this kind of sweet, sensitive type and you're a player. But she's like, oh, those girls are dumb. Like they're kind of like low quality. You know, she's just not even objecting to the number. She's objecting to the quality of the women. Yes. Yeah, it was really strange. I feel like no actual woman would have that reaction. It would be like, um okay, why are you sleeping with a bunch of women when you asked me out? Like, yeah, or something like that. It would not be literally just like, these girls are dumb. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. R.I.P. Julie, that will see you again. Um, Have fun, whatever corner of the glee verse. Uh, you're in. Um, also, it might not even be that. Like, she's really young, so maybe. But, like, when you go out on a first date with someone, you have no idea who they're sleeping with or what their their relationship policies are. Like, yeah, I think it's more weird that he decided to be like, I have chlamydia and I slept with two other girls the day right. after he went on a date with her. I'd be like, okay, that's too much information now we're done because I'm freaked out by what you told me. Not the, 
not the content of what you told me, just that you decided to tell me at this point in time. And it's weird. Yeah, it's like giving your credit score on the first date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> your sexual credit score. <laughs> My sexual credit score. Yeah. Um, it is funny because this is very much a tangent, but like the concept of like what is slutty has always been very confusing to me because growing mm-hmm. up in the sheltered environment I did, like there are people who I thought were slutty, but I didn't think they were having sex. Um, and then as I kind of became aware of what that meant, I just assumed, well, okay, like the people that aren't from this kind of community that I come from are okay with sex. But then mm-hmm. those people would still be like, oh, well, that's slutty or that's slutty. This person's a slut. And I'd yeah. be confused because I'm like, I thought you were the people that were supposed to be cool with sex. Yeah. Like why is some, it always seems so arbitrary to me why some sexual behavior was not slutty and others were slutty if you didn't have this like strict religious lens that you were viewing it for that like clearly defined that yeah Mm -hmm. because I just remember one guy was like any girl that puts out is a slut and I just remember being like I was like what and I was like you know I would still hate it if you were one of those wait until marriage people but the fact that I know you're not makes it even more confusing to me wait a second <laughs> because if you want to have sex with these women so every woman they have who says to put out <laughs> yes to you is a slut oh i think that oh, just no. goes to the double standard of like it's it is a double standard between women and men yeah yeah mm-hmm. and like it's always confusing to me because i'm like well it takes two to tango so something's not lining up yeah. um I was listening to a podcast on Archduke Franz Ferdinand, um, whose wife, of you were. whose wife was noble but not noble enough. So the the his the the emperor refused to go to the wedding and stood by a traditional marriage by spending the weekend in a spa town with his mistress. So, whoa, yeah. Um, okay, so Artie is like. You know, he I guess he learned his lesson. He's like, I lost Julie, you know, the one girl I wanted, um, the high value woman, you know, yes. as opposed to those dumb sluts I was sleeping with, the Madonna in my Madonna whore complex. Um, so, or the Eve to the Lilith, let me trigger Hannah without her even being here. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> Somewhere on a plane, <laughs> Hannah just went, oh. <laughs> Um, so yeah um that's kind of where he comes from they're like okay we all need to test more we all need to you know learn um and that's I guess Artie's arc um I doubt he will treat women any better it is not in his nature to learn and grow no, or really any Glee character's nature. <laughs> no. I think the only, like, I think we've discussed, oddly enough, one of the few characters that has grown was Ryder because he was mm-hmm. went from transphobic to not transphobic. Yeah. True. You know, I think you could argue Finn grew. Did he, though? I think, I mean, he went from being very, like, fragilely masculine, homophobic to just fragilely masculine. Um, okay. I would say that um, I guess Puck stopped I don't know I don't know if Puck had a growth um, yeah. yeah like none of the characters really grow in Glee um, yeah so whatever um, let's talk about the destruction of the oh my God. HSS claim um, oh boy uh, as a side note I have an ice cube container that is Titanic little Titanic molds and little iceberg molds. And I had filled that to put in my whiskey uh, to represent the destruction of clean. Oh my God. Uh, but the ice did not set in time. So <laughs> the thought was there. The thought was there. I'm glad we're on the same boat because the blurt ship, the blurt ship is sinking. Um, it's never been healthy, but now it's just bad. Yeah. We're all on the same sinking boat here. Yeah. Yeah. And considering now, because Finchel can be no more, 
considering now it's like the show's main ship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. Unless, are they trying to go Sam Sadie's for the main ship here? They might be, to be honest. I'm going to be honest, though, this writer's room would never give Mercedes the main ship. That is, that is the problem. Also, I feel like two white gay, like cis white gay men, like, are easy to sell, right? Like, it's, that's going to get a lot more popularity and buzz, unfortunately, mm -hmm. which is bullshit, but that's the nature of television. So uh, Blaine is loves food now. Honestly, good for him. Like, yeah, in that little montage of him eating all those foods, I was like, that looks delicious. And he loves cronuts. Yes. Um, um, which are croissant donuts. Yes. For anyone who doesn't know, which was me at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I remember in college we had like the Meadowbrook ball because there's we Meadowbrook Hall was a mansion on our campus and they'd have like the Meadowbrook ball in one year it was like they're having cronuts. Whoa. <laughs> it was like such a big deal. Um uh, cronuts like, are delicious. They are. There's a storyline here. You know, there's a storyline that could have been interesting. We could have talked about Blaine using food as a coping mechanism to handle the stress of moving to a big city, mm -hmm. of starting school, of being engaged yeah. at 19. Literally all of <laughs> these things, like a coping mechanism for everything in his life. Yeah. I want to see all of these problems, but we don't see any of them. They're like, it's just a, Glee has always, Glee is not a body, body positive show. No. I will just say that now. I mean, do you remember they had when? That, oh, they on. had the one good episode with Mercedes and Quinn in season one. Yeah. Where Quinn was like, you know, you have to love your body and you're beautiful. And like, it gave me a different relationship with food. That was actually like very well written. Yeah. Um, and then like the Quinn Mercedes friendship, that went out the window. <laughs> Because nothing good in the show can stay. Well, and they had the episode where Shu like suspended Marley because she didn't want to wear like a provocative yep. mm -hmm. thing. And also she had like a really bad eating disorder and passed out and she got in trouble. Like mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. show does not like to promote healthy things. The way like Quinn's whole used to be fat backstory, the way Puck treated Lauren. Oh my God. Yep. Remember yep. when Lauren was on this show? Um, I, I, I right definitely now. forgot about her. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, this Finn, the way they talked about Finn's body all the time. Yeah. Yep. Um, and didn't Sam go through something at one point? Like I have a vague right. memory of him like being obsessed with the yes. gym and like measuring his body fat. Okay. It was during the episodes. calendar. Yeah. yeah. He had the, oh, calendar, the calendar one. And then the one where Mr. Shu was like, oh, I'm going to be Rocky now. And then Sam was like, it's because I'm fat. Yes. Yep. I think with Sam, they also, oh they God. handled it well. Okay, I'll give them that. They handled it well. But it's easier for Glee to forgive you for things when you're hot. Yes. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, it's not, it's not a body, body positive show. But like, it just fundamentally does not understand any of the reasons people gain weight. Change no. in metabolism, change in lifestyle, you know, stress eating. Like stress eating isn't that complicated of a concept. No, like, it's not pretty at baseline. All. Like it's easy to ask you, like Blaine is stressed, Blaine is eating a lot, school is hard. Yeah. Um, instead he's just like cartoonishly eating like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, like. Yeah. Literally shoved the entire Corona in his mouth. And I was like, I am really surprised you could fit it all in there. I am not envious of the PA who had to empty that spit bucket. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right? Because that, the, I mean, he was only doing that because, like, oh my gosh, it'd be so fun if you did, if you. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing. He's like, yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> Let's go. Like, it just. Like, they don't give a good reason. They're just like, Blaine loves food now. Um, well, they kind of try to, because he says, you know, in Lima, their version of, like, 
cuisine food with is, breadsticks. Cuis- yeah, and like Taco Bell. And I actually think that that is like really valid when you get to a place that actually has flavor uh, and try. variety, like wanting to try all of it, right? Uh, as, you know, someone who was raised on like white people food in the Midwest, like I think moving to Boston and now LA has been so nice for new foods, but like they just... Glee just doesn't know how to bring it home. No. You know, it's yeah. that makes me think of Rafa was like, Oh, did you ever eat Mexican food growing up? And I was like, Yeah, taco salad was one was my mom's favorite. <laughs> and he was like, describe that to me. And I started <laughs> describing it. And he's like, stop, stop, I can't. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, and you put ranch on it. And he's like, no. <laughs> That is the most Midwestern thing. <laughs> if it includes taco mix, it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll do you one better. My mom used to, well, and still does, because I was just home for a week and we had tacos and she did it again, would use the taco mix and then she would add water to it to further dilute the yeah. spice. Yeah. <laughs> we did, I don't I, think we even use taco mix. <laughs> oh, God yeah so yeah i guess you could go for that but like he's just like cartoonishly eating and then yeah. he's like his pants don't fit and his stomach is big he's like oh and then comically it. like rip at the it's butt like crack. no one has a okay i don't want to say no one because maybe someone does have a body physique like that but that's typically i want to say your stomach just doesn't become bigger it looked, he looked kind of like he was pregnant. It was it, strange to me. It looked like he was doing the thing where you like you stick where you stick your stomach out. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, because they're having him wear baggy clothing because they're trying to tell us that Darren Chris is fat, and obviously yeah. he is not. And they're not gonna go. They're gonna do like a Christian Bale like weight gain. No, it almost no. looked like they had him wear a prosthetic, but I don't think they did. Yeah, I think he was just doing. Yeah. Like, I have rolls. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this was the TikTok trend. Remember the TikTok trend where they used to like, they had that song about beautiful, and they'd like look ugly, and then they jump, and then they'd be hot. Yeah. Hmm. I got a lot of those when I first got TikTok and I didn't know what I liked. I remember yeah. being like, I think I might delete this app. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so he's at stage combat class, which I do think is a class. There's been a big emphasis on it in the Niata curriculum. Yes. Um, I don't think it's that, but I do think it is a class. Um, and they're like, and he's just eating cheese puffs. And, and he's just very covered terribly. in cheese. Okay, right. this it's is just the like... second episode in a row where I've seen a man on the show just eat like a, a monster. Like last episode, Sam was eating the cereal and it was going everywhere, spitting out milk. Oh, and yeah. I was like, oh my God. And then Mercedes like jumped on him and I'm like, how is she not turned off by the way he's eating the cereal right now? <laughs> this Once episode, again. it's Blaine with the Cheetos, getting them everywhere. It's all over his fingers. It's all over his mouth. It's all over the clothes and in the that, floor. That and shot I, where he like wipes his hand off on his black pants. I was like, no, no, don't no. do that. And I'm like, why? What are you like, eating if he's right someone now? who's ever been athletic, which we know he has, he would know yeah. you don't bring the A, why would you bring a full bag of Cheetos to class? B, why would you eat them in the front of a class where you're about to do athletic things? Yeah, exactly. Does not make sense. Well, and that's where he says, like, I, I wrote this quote down because I was like, oh, red flag. Uh, but he was like, I'm not used to Kurt being seen as like a sexual object, and I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. And oh. I was like, what? Like you're the one having sex with him. Right. So well, I hope apparently not. Apparently uh, not. As okay, they later they, say. They win a week. Whatever. Anyone who's been in a relationship and has his <laughs> schedules and busyness that happens sometimes. It <laughs> does happen. <laughs> like, um, okay. 
They don't even live together anymore. They so. don't live together anymore. Right? Which again was the bad choice. They should have had Blaine switch his classes so they didn't spend every waking moment together. And then they could yes. just Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um also those two would not have survived the pandemic. Oh I'm just my saying. god. Can we have a spin-off of just Blaine and Kurt in the pandemic? And it turns into a murder. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just it's it's just a straight up drama oh my god yes and it's framed as who kills who the murderer i don't know yet but it's framed as the murderer making a podcast from his room about how it turned into a murder (laughs) i'm love yes it's perfect (laughs) i love it full circle american glee story um (laughs) so yeah, he's like, you know, I used to kickbox. He's basically like, I used to be the hot one. I used to be the one that was desired. I had Sebastian and Lighthouse Boy and all those people poking yeah. me. Um, and like, I was, and now like, Kurt's super muscular and people think he's a hero and everyone's into him. You know, Chris Colfer has aged really well. He, he has. looks great. He looks great. But part of that is because he was a literal 18 year old in the in the first season what acting alongside like 25 year olds so yes. he looked the way like 18 year olds and teenagers look um and now he's in which is like, weird and lanky and awkward yeah. yeah and now he's like his adult self yeah um, and it, it sounds like he's taking care of his adult self or even like maybe not even taking care of but just like it, it sounds like he's really happy with like the things that he's doing and like is really into his fitness and nutrition regimen, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say he exhibits some eating disorder behavior. Yes. Um, but people in LA think eating disorders are just how people exist. So, yeah. you know, which is so sad. It really is. Yeah. Um, like I was like, your boyfriend bought you a frozen hot chocolate. That's so nice. <laughs> his boyfriend made him a meal. Yeah. That he didn't eat. It sounded so good. Like, yeah, I get, okay, we can, I can't eat that all the time. But, you know, Buddhist monks don't eat meat because they believe in nonviolence. But if someone offers them meat, they eat it. Do you think you're better than Buddhism, Kurt? Obviously. Um, he probably does, actually. <laughs> yeah, Kurt's very judgmental. I was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so like, yeah, well, we're getting ahead. So he's like, sorry, he's upset that everyone thinks Kurt is hot now and he's not the hot one. Um, and I think he like, he got so used because he was talking about like, I used to have to protect Kurt. He used to be this like fragile little thing and now he's not and I hate it. And I'm like that, you should be happy that your partner is growing. <laughs> yeah, that was rough. I was like, ooh, because, I yeah. don't want that to ever happen in a relationship ever for me personally. And no. I maybe it's good that they don't live together anymore and that they possibly will break up because that's not a good way to think about your partner. That's really unhealthy. And like, it's also a, We'll get into this, but they basically assassinate how we viewed Blaine's character this whole time. Yes. And it also, I think it comes down to how Blaine was this kind of teenage dream, this fantasy when he was introduced. You know, literally. 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 And Kurt was kind of this Ryan Murphy stand in. Mm-hmm. Blaine has broader appeal. People like Blaine more than they like Kurt. Ryan Murphy yeah. did not have this. Absolutely not. They're like, we need to make Blaine the bad one and make Kurt the flawless gay martyr. Yeah. Um, and even then, like, it, it just, it, Glee has commitment issues. Because even then, like, I think it, like a lot of the things Blaine was saying, I was like, oh, so he wants Kurt to be completely, like, dependent on him like in a very codependent yeah. relationship and and really be like mirrored because I used I like I used to be in an emotionally abusive relationship and like really mirrored a lot of the things that like my at the time girlfriend would would say and so I was like assassination of Blaine's character I hate this I hate everything about this but like if you're gonna do it follow through like follow that storyline through but I, yeah. I don't do that yeah they, so. they treat it as something that can be resolved yeah 
when that's like a much deeper issue. Yeah. Yeah, it ruins the way Blaine's, it ruins his entire character. Like, yeah, in the past too. Absolutely, because you look back and you're like, well, what was Blaine's motivation for like protecting Kurt or standing up for Kurt or like switching to new directions? Like, was, was it because he needed to be like needed? Yeah, it, what he, it wasn't out of kindness or goodness. It was he needed to feel like a hero. He was yeah. a Mr. Shoe. He was a white savior. Yeah. You know, he needed to feel like he was saving Kurt, you know, and that's just like, yeah, so they, uh, so then, yeah, they're at the, di- they're, he's jealous of Kurt, and then he gets Kurt the frozen hot chocolate. Which is so nice, I will say that. Like, it's very cute. But he's also like, it's cause, it's implied that he's trying to fatten Kurt up. Yeah. And then... He's like, Kurt's like, well, I guess I'll have a sip. And he's like- And then run home. Yeah, and he's like, or you can just eat the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, when I went to a nutritionist, and this is when I was living a similar lifestyle to Kurt. I was exercising every day. I was living in a city where I was walking all the time. The nutritionist said, you know, like, she's like, we're not going to do the whole count, but she was like, have this many servings of this, this many servings of this, and you have about this many calories, give or take, to just eat whatever, because you burn this many calories. She was giving me the amount of calories I was supposed to eat just to maintain, like, a healthy existence, not even to, like, she's like, and then if you add exercise onto that, you'll lose weight, but, like, this was just to maintain, like, being healthy because we just burn calories by existing. And I think that's something a lot of diet culture likes to ignore is that, yes, you need to eat, you need to be active, you need to make healthy choices, whatever, but like we need calories to live and to function and we burn them just by living and functioning, you know? So like one dessert isn't gonna, isn't gonna ruin you. No, not at all. You know, maybe if you have to be in a Marvel movie and you need to be like super fit or whatever, then I, you know, I guess I get it. Um, Eat nothing but one chicken breast a day and no water uh, so you can get that ab shot. No water. (laughs) That's if they, I've heard the Marvel, like the Marvel regimens are very, very toxic. Like I've, I've read that um, if the men have like a shirtless scene, because if your body's dehydrated, your muscles will pop more. So a lot of times, like if they have a shirtless scene, they will not drink water for like I've read like anywhere from like one to three days before. That's yeah. Zach stupid. Efron talked about that. That's stupid. Yeah. With Baywatch, yeah. No. I'm sure. Yeah. He was like, I'm never gonna do a movie like that again. It was so toxic. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh god. And then we oh, have that's the, terrible. We yeah. have the reverse. Or not the reverse, but so then remember Zach Efron had that show where he like dude wrote around and like did things. Oh yeah. You know, it wasn't for me, didn't watch it. But like people started calling it dad bod Mm -hmm. because he wasn't Baywatch level. But people were pointing out like, he's still like very young, very fit, very Very attractive. Yeah. You know, like this isn't, like if this is what dad bod is, like that's not what dads typically look like. No, that's not attainable. Yeah, like he's super healthy right now. He's just not literally dehydrating himself. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the world is so wrong. There's so many wrong things with it. Yeah. It's disgusting. And I think like with Kurt and Blaine, like they're they're both in the wrong, right? Like I well, not in the wrong, but like there's there's problems with both sides of this this frozen mm-hmm. hot chocolate debacle because I think Kurt, you know, like Blaine has done a very nice thing for him, like Obviously, it does throw off whatever, like, diet and exercise thing he is on. But, like, Blaine did a really nice thing. And it's not, at Colin, to your point, it's not going to, like, kill you. Yeah, especially when you have like, a 19-year-old metabolism. Exactly. Uh, but You then, don't have to eat the whole thing either. Like, yeah. it's huge. It's not going to be, like, no one, I don't think anyone <laughs> would expect you to eat the whole thing. <laughs> right? That, that, too. And also, like, you don't need to make snide comments about, like, I'll just have to run home after. But then at yeah. the same I was like, time... You can't run in what you're wearing. <laughs> I don't run. I didn't clock that. I just assumed you would have been able to do it. Uh, I mean, you can run in anything, whether or exactly. not it makes it. Mm. Yeah, imagine running in, like, dress pants. 
Hey, if Bryce, right. Dallas right. Howard, <laughs> if Bryce Dallas Howard can run in heels, anything is possible. She can outrun a T-Rex in heels. Um, but also at the same time, like I know there have been times where like my partners, like Morgan has done Whole30. And so like knowing that that's what they're doing, I would never be like, hey, I bought you a frozen hot chocolate. Like, yeah, that's straight you know, up sabotage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or like if if we do go out for ice cream, like it's something that where it's like, hey, this is like a special day. And I know it falls in the middle of like our whole 30 thing, but like, let's go celebrate anyway. And so like, that's something then where we talk about it beforehand. Uh, and so I feel like just, that was just a no win situation. Yeah. And so then they're making dinner. They're going to do a movie date. He makes the Alfredo, the chocolate lava cake. And then Kurt's like, what if we just like grab salads in the way? And I'm like, a salad is not going to maintain those muscles, Kurt. No. Like, you don't get those muscles from just eating the salad. Yeah. Also, yeah, there's like, a whole, like, like people become nutritionists so that you can figure out the, the, the amount of protein and the amount of fiber and the amount of, like, whatever. Salad doesn't have protein. No, it does not. Yeah. Says the non-nutritionist. <laughs> but this I know. Yeah, well, as a, you know, pescatarian, like, I have to make sure I'm eating protein. And I know if I just get a salad, that's not going to be giving me the protein I need. No. Um, fun fact, I ate rice and tofu today for dinner while driving. So I couldn't use a fork. So I just ate it with my mouth, like, in the container. Just went like, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was That's like, I'm not going to have time. I'm arriving like barely on time to record. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, this but is, also, that's amazing. This is my first day commuting, like figuring out the commute from Burbank to Alhambra. Like oh, I've done yeah. it in the morning, but now I'm doing it at night. Yeah. So now I know. Um, yeah. Um, also, also, that's just like super rude because everything that Blaine listed i think there's also like potatoes gratin or whatever yeah everything that blaine listed takes a lot of time to prepare yes i was that's that's rude kurt yeah yeah it was you know and like i know they're gonna be like oh he's just trying to fatten him up but like if someone buys you one frozen hot chocolate and makes you a not super healthy meal one time i don't think i would jump to their fattening me no Maybe like, if you're like in the middle of the woods and there's this old lady in a house <laughs> made of candy, but otherwise, and she's no. keeping me in a cage and testing yeah. my finger, like exactly. <laughs> there are signs, but in this case, it wasn't any of them, they weren't there. Yeah, yeah. Um, so then. There and then Kurt opens the the laptop to find Showtime, and Blaine is the one person in the world who just leaves porn up when he's done. Yep. Because <laughs> even that's... if you're not erasing your history, you close the tag. Listen, right? I've seen this trope is a thing, and I don't know why because no one it does doesn't that happen. Well, yeah, like you because otherwise, like porn sites even ones that are kind of considered like mainstream often like open tabs and like do things and do pop-ups and yeah yep yeah so like you don't leave them open no unattended (laughs) porn that's a recipe for disaster yeah uh super weird um and then Chris like this is why we haven't had sex all week Actually, it's because the commute between our apartments is a little bit too long with our class schedule, but let's not talk about that. No. Yeah, I wonder if we're literally ever going to see Blaine at the apartment he allegedly lives in. (laughs) Probably not. Doubtful. (laughs) You think they're going to spend money on that set? (laughs) No, well, they they have the set. It's just Sam and Mercedes are the only characters that hang out there. That's true. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so then... I just put it together. Uh, so then they have their fencing in their stage combat class. 
Okay. So aggro. I did love the choreography for this number. I was on the fencing team. Mm-hmm. Fencing is not stage combat. That's like the t- the first thing they tell you when yeah. you start fencing <laughs> is that what we do in fencing is nothing like what you see in movies or TV. Um, they were doing saber, the most aggressive kind of fencing, but they were not wearing the proper saber equipment. Mm. Um, maybe it was foil. Pretty sure it was saber. Um, I did FA. That's okay. where your whole body's a target. There's no target zone. Okay. Oh, that's interesting. Um, and that's like kind of based on like strength and strategy. And that's what I was good at, especially because I was tall and long and left-handed. Um, yeah. Um, this, okay. So they're fencing. Blaine's getting mad that Kurt keeps beating him. And then they're mad and they have to do shirts for skins, Spartans and Athenians. And Kurt's mm-hmm. like, I'm going to be skins. Mm-hmm. Um, because Some other guy makes a comment like, yeah, you are. <laughs> I was like, okay. And he's like, you know, uh, I used to be scared. I never showered when I had gym. And I'm like, so this entire time, <laughs> Kurt was singing Defying Gravity while smelling and like Dr. Dillamond. <laughs> <laughs> like... Although, did Kurt really participate in gym that much? Like, I know he was the kicker on the football team, but... Well, like, it's a class. You have to do things. Yeah. Yeah. But did he, like, actively participate? Or was he more like, no, I refuse? But then don't you fail? I don't know. No. I don't think so. You know, you can, like, kind of refuse without actually saying refusing. Yeah. Minimum effort. That's what that's called. <laughs> yes. And I know a lot of girls will like fake being on their period or having cramps. I don't know what Kurt would have done, but like, yeah. Probably that. Yeah. <laughs> the gym coach was Coach Tanaka. He didn't know the difference between a gay say, and a woman. Like, I'm, I'm menstruating uh, and I need to not play right now. <laughs> I remember uh, my sister. One time, this is like the devastation of her childhood. She got a D in her homeschool gym class because it was like she had to play basketball with my brother and he was so annoying that she didn't want to do it or something. <laughs> she got a B. I'm going to make fun of her for that the next time I see her. <laughs> um, I'm like, uh, you have to get a kickball <laughs> because you got a B in homeschool gym class. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They event, I feel like they gave up on doing gym when I was, by the time I was in middle school, they, yeah, they just yeah. forgot um, third child things. Um, Lucky. So they're like, they're singing Love is a Battlefield. They're doing battle choreography. But not the Jordan Sparks version. The Pat Benatar version, of course. Yes, obviously. I actually really like this song and the choreography. It was was fun to watch. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, it was the only number that was, like, fine, I guess. I guess the Mercedes number was okay. This one felt like the only song that was a number. Yes. Yeah. If I can make that distinction. Because there was choreography and... Yeah. I just love how Kurt's in tank tops and Blaine's in like loose thermals. Yeah. <laughs> what season is this? Yeah. So yeah, they're singing Love is a Battlefield. And then, so then Kurt's like, you were really going after me in the stage combat. And Blaine's like, you know, I'm feeling insecure. Like fratboys.com isn't gonna judge me. I feel insecure compared to you. And you know what that? You know, that could have been the conflict. Yeah. That, like he was insecure around Kurt. Like that's like a real valid, like, I feel like my partner is out of my league. Like, yeah. and I feel like, especially like after having just like moved out, you can totally understand like being nervous about the relationship and like, oh no, is my partner like growing without me? Are they going to stop loving me? Like, it's all valid. Yeah, Blaine's like, I'm scared that one day you're going to wake up and be like, I don't love him anymore. Yeah. And you know, and that's this interesting thing because it's a high school relationship and Mm -hmm. Kurt could very rightfully grow out of it. Yeah. You know, 
he d- maybe doesn't need that kind of fantasy boyfriend anymore. The problem is this fantasy boyfriend is now a main character in this show. And it's a, and like, so the only way they thought that you can break the mold by showing the layers. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend does this with the character mm-hmm. of Josh. Oh yeah. They show his flaws and insecurities without making him a total villain. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you could do that with Blaine, kind of like Kurt's starting to see Blaine for who he is, you know? Absolutely. And I think, again, they're always, they always go for these really weird, like obvious, like Blaine cheats on him when they could have had done something really interesting the first time they broke up, you know? Um, and now it's like, oh, Blaine wants him to be fat. Or like Blaine feels bad that he's fat. When it could be this very interesting thing of okay, maybe he's seeing Blaine as someone who's like insecure and needs a lot of attention. Yeah. He does. He does need a lot of attention. Um, puppet master. And then uh like he could be seeing Blaine for who he is, who for who Tina knows him to be. And uh he could like lose the shine, like the Prince Charming shine. Yeah. Um but instead, they villainize. They they go the Hans of the Southern Isles route. That prince is a sham. You know, yes. he liked you because you were weak. And he felt good protecting you and that you needed him. That yeah. ruins this character we've known for so long. Yep. Yep. Goodbye, Blaine Anderson. It's really sad. I'm sad. It's right. also sad because we got like a season and a half of Blaine without Kurt, really. You know, we got season four Blaine. So we really, I mean, yes, he's always been kind of a love bot, as we say, but like we really did kind of get to know him outside of this relationship. So he's yeah. more to us than just a love interest to Kurt. Yep. You know, so like. And they ruined it. Yeah. So like. Absolutely. I used to say, okay, there's three characters I less still care about on this show. Blaine, Sam, and Tina. Mm-hmm. Now it's only Tina and she's not on the show. <laughs> yeah, Tina's not on the show. I guess where you know, the hell's I, Tina? I still care about Sam. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I care about Mercedes. She's back and I care. She was yes. gone. That's why I was saying it. But she's back and I'm like, okay, I'm invested. But yeah. I still care about Santana at this point. She just wasn't in this episode. She wasn't in it. How long is she? She's not been in the last what like four or five episodes at least. I mean, I think the last one she was in was New Direction. So she wasn't in New New York or Bash. So two. Cool. Oh, well, it feels longer. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I do think there's viewing Santana with lesbian colored glasses. Um, I do that. I, I put those on you, every day. Santana's very funny. So when you look back at this show and you remember the funny moments and the great musical performances, you have fond memories of Santana. But when mm-hmm. you watch this show every week, you're like, oh, that woman is awful. She is not a nice person. <laughs> no, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. I'm Lima Heights adjacent, bitch. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, I, I like Santana in concept, not in practice. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. I do kind of feel the same way about Brittany, though. You yeah. know, she's nicer, but not really. She's too inconsistent. Mm-hmm. Too yeah. erratic. I mean, they've done, she was, I want to say, like, you know, first three, even four seasons, Brittany, Brittany's character is consistent. And then, like, fifth season when she graduates and she has all these weird things like turning her into a genius not that was so- not a smart move really she should have been an influencer so weird. Yeah. yeah were influencers a thing in the yeah well, i mean she's okay. our, she has a youtube channel she could at that's least true like- this was like jenna marbles miranda sings era youtube that's true so yeah we didn't have the terminology influencer but we definitely had like YouTube. We just told yeah. them YouTubers, yeah. 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 Um, oh, yeah. I miss the holy trinity of YouTube every day. Um, the, are you talking about Grace Helbig and... Hannah Hart and Mamrie Hart? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. Uh, uh, and, yeah. She has... Grace Helbig has an Easter song they listen to every Easter. Nice. Um, so... <sighs> 
Where were, yeah. Is that really how, yeah. Cause well, Blaine's also like, you asked me to move out. And Kurt's like, we decided that together. Yeah. And I'm like, yes, but it's still like a, it was, it's a poor choice. It, yes. Because you're, you're getting married. You're engaged. You know what being married is? It's living together. It's living together. <laughs> Unless you're royals and you have multiple palaces and sleep in separate bedrooms and have a consummation that is a watched public event. You live you know, together. You live together. Um, welcome to the peasantry. Uh, so like, I don't know. I mean, or you could just be really, really fucking rich. You don't have to be royal anymore. Yeah. True. Neither of them are. Yeah. Yes. So, Unfortunately for them. Yeah, yeah it's just like, so eventually they're like, Kurt's like, yeah, maybe it's a race. And like, maybe that's the way it always has to be with two guys. And like. Does Kurt say that or does Blaine? Kurt think- says that. Well, okay. Blaine brings the race metaphor in. And then Kurt's like, maybe. Kurt's like, well, I'd rather be running it with you, like together. Yeah. Um, but he says, maybe it's always a competition. Maybe that's how it is between two guys. Is is that true, Cullen? I'm not gay. I was going to say, I can't speak to that. I'm not a gay man. <laughs> no, I feel like the any like like our insecurities that come from like differences are the same ones that a straight couple could potentially have. Okay. Yeah. You know, nothing that's particularly like masculine. Um so what you're saying is Kurt's statement was kind of like a Freudian insight into Ryan Murphy. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yes. And (laughs) yeah, it's just like, and the way a lot of people view men. Yeah. Being only competition based. (laughs) Yeah. In having, yeah, like, yep. Kurt is Ayn Rand. I said it. (laughs) (laughs) Ryan Murphy shrugged. Um, Rachel is the meritocracy. It, it's all coming together. Glee is capitalism. Glee is capitalism. You're all minorities. Um, you're in Glee Club. You're in Glee Club. Uh, so I guess they kind of decide, you know, we're going to do this together. Uh, don't be a secure girl. Work that ponytail. Work that up, do. Um, so... Okay. Um, Sam Sadie's. I don't love them as a couple, but I liked I liked their storyline. Yes, because you said that, like you were saying, oh, I forgot they were a thing. I don't really like them as a couple. And I was like, you know, I kind of do. So I'm interested. Yeah. What's kind of your reasoning? Because it's Glee. There's no nothing sacred. I'm open to interpretation of everything. They They just don't make sense to me. Uh, I think she is, they just don't make sense to me. I forget they're a thing every single time. I don't actually think they have chemistry. Um, I think she's like way too smart and talented for him. Uh, There's just, like he's a sweetheart, but I think Mercedes is is just way out of his league. And it, it, it just doesn't make sense to me. It is very much a pair of the spares pairing. Yes. Yeah, I feel that. I feel like Mercedes does not get the love life attention she deserves, you know, as is very common for Black women in media. Yes. And I think she just, she deserves a great love story, not Rachel Berry's cast-offs. Yeah, and like, because yeah, I think that is, if I had to pick the flaw, is that she is too smart for him and like I know we all love a himbo but like I just like I there's like the intellectual and like spiritual even like kind of dissonance dissonance yeah it's interesting because (laughs) I like to see Sam grow and I think he's growing with Mercedes but mm-hmm. Mercedes isn't really gaining anything from the relationship. It's all Sam that's gaining something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Who would you, of the Sam's ships, which ones do you support? 
which is do you think sam if you were if you were a glee writer if you're working on the glee boot um in my draft of the glee boot i combined sam and finn but um how say they're separate characters who are you shipping them with i'm gonna turn in my lesbian card very very briefly and say actually britney um because i think they have like they they're just they're on that same wavelength i actually loved it when they were together yeah i yeah. loved them together it, it works so well yeah it you could have Sam with Brittany and Santana with Demi Lovato. Oh my God, yes. Yeah, like, I think Sam and Brittany, I mean, I think Sam and Blaine, top tier. Um, Sam and yes. Brittany, good. Sam Sadies and Sam and Quinn are kind of around the same. I feel like they have the same core problem. Yeah. Of the intellectual thing. Sam and Tina would have been a mess, but like... Glee gives us messes all the time. Why didn't we get this mess? Yeah. It might have been fun to watch. Like, yeah. Like the way it's fun to watch geese chasing after children <laughs> and like terrorizing people. <laughs> like that's yes. pretty fun to watch. Not yes. necessarily an all around, you know, good for the world, but fun. But fun. It's <laughs> entertaining. <laughs> If you're doing like a high school kind of drama club show, there was always that couple that had new drama every week that was kind of hilarious. Yes. Like I could just see Tina coming in, you know what you did. <laughs> <laughs> and Sammy like, no, I don't. <laughs> we were what watching did Psych. I do? <laughs> yeah. We were watching Psych. And you ate the pineapple. <laughs> With the rind, like I don't just unacceptable. Like, I, guess, I can see this crazy thing. Maybe you like me more if I was a pineapple. <laughs> like, <I could> just, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh no. So I'm trying to think where we start with this relationship. They are. I think they're making. They're making, they're making out. out. They're making out. Necking. Necking, you know, as the kids say. Um, and she, she's moving his hand up. Yes. Um, this is a classic Glee scene. Classic. We see it, saw it with Jake and Marley. We've seen it with a couple of people in Quinn, Finn and Quinn, Sam and Quinn, Puck and Quinn. Mm-hmm. Probably Rachel and Finn. Rachel and Finn. Rachel and Puck. Rachel and Puck. Rachel and Jesse. Mm-hmm. Forgot about Jesse. Yeah. yeah. So never forget about Jesse. Um, so like it's a classic. Um, and then Mercedes is like, you know, like we need to talk. And she's like, you know, I haven't really done it. Mm-hmm. I'm a virgin. And Sam's like, oh, I'm not. Because he honesty has- is good. Honesty is good. He's been married before. So yeah. True. You know, um, at 19. <laughs> but like again, like it this storyline gives me time jump vibes because they're kind of like, oh my gosh, she's a virgin. And I'm like, yeah, she's like 19. Yeah. That's not crazy. Not mm-hmm. at all. Like, I don't really, I don't really care to know what the, the virginity statistics of young women are. I think I'm fine if I never know that. But <laughs> like I would say, like. Yeah, probably maybe the majority of people, it's high school. But I think a decent population of people are still virgins after high school. Absolutely. Oh, like, yeah. A significant, like, like a sizable number. Like, that is not abnormal. I think the Glee universe is just a cesspool. Yeah. I, pretty much, like, American TV in general, kind of. Yeah. We very much... <laughs> that too portray yeah like it's super weird if you haven't had sex by like your sophomore year of high school but it's yeah. actually very normal it's very normal especially yeah. <laughs> when you think about what a 14 year old looks like and you're like mm-hmm. yeah fun fact about me um i remember when i was a freshman in high school i was very flirty though when asked to define what flirting was around that age, I said, it's talking, but you smile more. Um, <laughs> so I, I like to clarify that because some people interpret flirting as touching. 
Yeah. I wasn't going around touching all the girls my age, but I was very chatty with them. And I and you liked, smiled a lot. I smiled a lot. <laughs> I try and be very, try. I try hard to be funny. Mm-hmm. And I like was craving that attention, right? And I remember one of the moms like told my dad, she was like, my daughter is not ready to date. Um, and he was just like, okay. <laughs> like, Thanks I don't think for he's, letting me know. He's yeah. like, I don't think he's trying to date her, but yeah. Which does make me think of I remember my friend Daniel being like, okay, Colin, you're funny, but you're not that funny. She was laughing at everything you were saying, and it wasn't <laughs> that funny. <laughs> um where's that yeah but I was like yeah I was a kid you know like you're like you're aware of romance and stuff like that so you are starting to play along your bodies go through changes yeah some kids do have sex at a young age and start exploring at a young age but I don't think it's as universal as it is on tv Mm mm-mm you know, Secret Life, the American Teenager. My dad died a horrible death because I had incredible sex. Never forget. Yeah. Um, so anyways, they are like talking about it. And she's like, you know, I just want to be sure that I'm ready, that I'm emotionally ready, you know, like that I'm comfortable. And he's like, okay, so do you mean like a week? And she's like, <laughs> longer than that, yeah. you know. Apparently they're sleeping in the same bed though. Yes. They, so, they like live together effectively. So that, I think that is the twist here. Yeah. You know, because again, growing up in the culture I did, I was told it was just as bad to sleep with someone you think is hot, even if you don't touch each other, or have sex. Interesting. Strange. Uh, yes. Strange. Yes. And that's one of the reasons Twilight was bad. Hmm. That's I, the reason that they chose <laughs> not the stalking you at night and watching you sleep. Yeah. It, it was the sleeping innocently together. Um, <laughs> I We weren't taught that. We It was more like, that's just opening the door to temptation. Too much temptation. Yeah. Yes, the classic yeah. purity mm-hmm. talk. If you're carrying the girl over a cliff, you're not going to mm-hmm. keep asking, how far can I go without dropping yeah. her? You're not going to take that risk. And if you're the girl, you can't make your brother in Christ stumble. By sleeping. <sighs> By performing a necessary <laughs> function. <laughs> oh, no. Don't be unconscious around boys. That's that That's really portal. sad, but I probably would, if I had a daughter, I, I might tell her that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> just like, uh, yes, if you're dating someone, you trust them, but maybe I, be careful. <laughs> I heard a great metaphor the other day for the like, not all men, whatever, yeah. is like one of the like first rules in gun safety is to always treat the gun like it's loaded. Mm-hmm. Even if like, you know, it's not, or like, you don't think anything is in there, just treat it like it's loaded. And I think that that is really appropriate for that, where it's like, you're absolutely right. Not all men, but safety says just be prepared for the gun to be loaded. And I really like that metaphor. You never know. You never And know. I can say from statistics and personal experience, it's often people you know that do those things. Yes. So. On a related but lighter note, this was more in Boston when I was walking everywhere, but I remember like I was walking somewhere at night and I was like behind a woman who was walking. My dilemma was probably way, was definitely way less than hers. She's thinking, am I safe? Am I in danger? Mine is, mm-hmm. well, I'm probably making this woman uncomfortable. If I stay farther back, she might be convinced that I'm stalking her. But if I speed up to pass her, I might give her a heart attack as I get closer. <laughs> yeah. I never came up with a solution to that one, but that There's... was a... <laughs> There's I sometimes when I'm like walking behind a woman, even though I am a woman, I'm like, hopefully I don't think these footsteps are like whatever. So I'll try and be noisy because I'm like, obviously, if I was a stalker, I wouldn't I'd, I'd be trying to be quiet. Yeah, that's where my brain just so this person isn't freaked out by like someone walking behind them. But announce your presence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, I'm not stalking you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> I'm a nice guy. 
<laughs> so yeah, yeah she's, she's like, yeah, it's going to take a while. And then, so that's Sam is like, I'm going to give her a clean bill of health, you mm-hmm. know, to help reassure her. Yes. Um, and Mercedes is like, okay, thank you. Um, they're at, at church though. At church. Yes. It's like, okay, this isn't really the time or place, but thank you. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's such a himbo move. He's being, he's nervous about his outfit. He's nervous about fitting in. Mm -hmm. There's a cute scene. I do love how it was kind of implied that this was the black church, but there were definitely a lot of white people in the audience. Yes. That congregation, I should say. Um, But so they're at this church. They reference, they have, you know, people from Japan are there, the land of the rising sun. Um, Sam brings up how it's long Mm -hmm. that is actually a known kind of thing about black churches it's very long yes because you don't stop like at a set time you stop when you're done yeah it does crack me up when people say catholic mass is long because unless (laughs) it's unless it's the easter vigil it is i think of the denominations typically the most it's like a tight hour Yeah. yeah yeah One yeah. hour. If you're or lucky, less. under an yeah. hour. When I was yeah. in, when I was in Ireland, 20, 30 minutes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because they don't do a sermon. <laughs> they mm-hmm. don't all say the responses in unison. And they don't sing. Interesting. I was like, Grandma Callahan would have loved this. She hated when they sang too much in church. Oh my God, my dad hates that too. Yeah. Uh it's it. She would always complain. Yeah, she hated long masses. Um, which I do like the Easter Vigil, but when I go to the Easter Vigil, I'm aware that this we're doing every sacrament, we're doing you know a bonfire. Yeah, I came prepared. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But like, if it's just Sunday and this priest is like, Blended. I'm going to talk about everything. I'm just like, I remember that happened in high school once. I used to work on Sunday, so I'd have to go to church with my mom at 7.30 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And it was usually fine because I don't think I worked till like nine but yeah. one time I was late and like we left church early, but like oh, no. this guy was just talking and talking and talking and the church had a 930 mass. See, that's usually I would all I like I try and go to if there are two services, I'll go to the first one because I'm like, they can't go long. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll start to gear which church I go to based on like, okay, well, this one tends to go over. Like you know, uh, yeah. the earlier mass probably is going to be shorter anyway because those people are on schedules. Yeah, no, and it is like a thing because, like, I think my mom—I don't know if this is happening. My mom used to call it high mass. I think it's like from an old thing, but like the ten o'clock or the nine o'clock—that's going to be your big one. A lot of yeah. people, mm-hmm. it's going to have the choir. That's when they do that extra shit. It's um, so like seven, the family mass. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the earlier one, it's also usually more like intimate. And I think a lot more, like I always found it a lot more meaningful. Yeah. And when I was, that was a uh, age transition. Cause when I was a kid, I liked early because we get up early, we get out of the way. I can play Asian mythology the rest of the day. Incredible. Um, yes. But like then home, church as a homeschooler was my big social setting. I was like, I want to know the 9.30. Yeah, I want to flirt with these girls after I mass. Smile at them and I want to smile mad. at these girls <laughs> in a circle. You know that mom later said, I think the following year that I had great teeth. So there you go. Yeah. Um, Evolution. Character development more than any of that's on Glee. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yes, yeah, so they're at church, and then yeah. uh, they're like, Mercedes is going to sing, and Sam's like, What? <laughs> And she sings, I want to know what love is. It was a moment. It was a moment. I'm like, it's Mercedes. It's an Amber Riley cover. It's not going to be bad. Right. She did phenomenal. Is it going to be that interesting to watch? No. Eh. And like... Not really a church song. Yeah, that's what I'm like. <laughs> that too. You know, you could argue... That, you know, you want God to show you what love feels like because he shows the truest love. Yeah. Like, okay. I've okay. been to, to churches where they sing, like, modern music, and you're like, I could see that this could be about God, but it's not. But it could be. <laughs> it seems more like you're trying to show that you're integrated with pop culture so you don't continue to lose young members. Yep. <laughs> Even though that's not why they're leaving. Oh, my gosh. I just... 
I went to two Sundays in Michigan. I'm recovering from some <laughs> trauma anyway. <laughs> I went to, uh, so the Catholic Church, Pope Francis is doing these synods to get people's opinions so the Cardinals can reject it probably. Um, but I was in this thing and we were talking, like there are all these people who were like, the main things were like, hey, we want gay rights, equality for women. So yeah. kind of main, main what themes. A, what a concept. And this girl was like, you know, she said as a Latina Catholic, and I'm like, I don't know if all Latinas agree with you, but okay. I don't know if Sor Luna, the famous nun who was censored by the church for her academic writings would agree with you, but okay. Um, She was like, you know, women just can't be priests. And like, we just need to listen to what the church says and follow along, but we should have adoration more. And I was just kind of like, that's your feedback. unprecedented history and it's like we should just do what you say um oh boy where is it yeah but it was just kind of like that's not what that's not what's going to change people mm-hmm. you know uh yeah and the only reason the catholic church hasn't decreased as dramatically as protestant denominations is because of immigrants um so uh, um but yeah, so Mercedes sings, I want to know what love is. Not as bad as the time I accidentally heard a praise and worship version of Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. <laughs> oh, I'm going to dry <laughs> this. Hang on. Lord, no. I want your praise. Da, 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 da. Something about that. No, uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> so she sings it. And then she's... She like sings to Sam. She like yeah. comes up to him and like he stands up. I'd be like, I'd be mortified. <laughs> oh yeah. I'd be like sinking <laughs> down in the pew, like, no, this song yes, is not about me. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, and then the the pastor like comes up and is like holding their hands. I don't. I thought this was like some weird impromptu wedding. I was like, <laughs> wait, what? Right. I was like, and this is where I was like, is the pastor like blessing their union, like like their sexual yeah. union? And I could frankly see how later Sam is like, clearly tonight's the night. Like I'm gonna buy like a $2 dessert at Kurt's diner. And that's going to clinch the deal for me. Like I was like, okay, yeah, I can definitely see how Sam interprets this scene as Mercedes being like, yes, show me what love is. Yeah. Um, it was a little bit confusing. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Because it felt, it definitely felt weirdly like a virgin singing to an experienced man. Yep. Um, I want you to show me. Yeah. Yep. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but at a church, um, <laughs> it was just very confusing. But it's also just funny trying to frame this nineteen-year-old boy as this experienced man, right. you know? Yeah. Because like, has Sam really even had that many sexual partners at this point? He no. was a stripper at age what fifteen? Sixteen? True. Yeah, 16? True. maybe, maybe then. I really hope not that many. But <laughs> Maybe like, some of the more experienced strippers are like, hey, here's one. What a woman likes. But like Goodness. the Brittany, I know he probably slept and had sex with Brittany. Um, oh, yeah. I don't think him and Santana got that far. Him and Quinn did not get that far. I don't think he, hopefully he did not sleep with Nurse Penny. Otherwise she should go to jail. Um, and he only met out with Tina. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so they're like, oh my gosh, this show is all about men now. We need to have our two female characters interact. Um, so Mercedes and Rachel are at dinner or something. They're like, not at yeah. dinner. They're like hanging at the, at the apartment. Yeah. They're having girl talk doesn't pass the Bechdel test. Absolutely. Oh, no. <laughs> Lower, yeah. Um, but they're just talking, you know, but they're talking about sex. Mm-hmm. You know, just like when Tina went to the Glee Girls. <laughs> And not Tina, Rachel went to the Glee Girls and Tina had sex with Mike and she talked about how it was a positive experience mm-hmm. because the Unholy Trinity didn't really, like, it was not good. It was not no. good for those girls. No. Um, so Tina, the voice of sex positivity, icon. Um, so there, Rachel's like, you know, I it wasn't crazy because Mercedes is like, I don't need it to be a big fancy thing. 
I just need yeah. it to be meaningful. And I, I think that's valid. I think overall Absolutely. they were pretty valid with the way they were showing how Mercedes felt. Yeah. Um, and Rachel's like, you know, I mean, Rachel and Finn's first time at a weird point when I remember it because he yeah. was so sad. He didn't get into, wasn't going to play college football. And she was like, but you get me. And then I had yes. sex for the first time. Yep. Um, it, was, it was a little weird. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think Lee remembers that's why, but she was just kind of like, you know, we were at, at his house and it was special because he was special to me and I knew he loved me and I loved him. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I'm... <laughs> I guess I'm getting your two conversations mixed up because then, because what they're the other time they're just like making like cheese and strawberries or whatever. And yeah. Rachel's like, oh, like it's so great to have a girlfriend. Like Kurt tries, <laughs> but, uh, and Santana, you know, things were always kind of weird. Um, yeah. And I'm like, okay, this is valid. And they're like, so they're just talk- chatting and, you know, Rachel's like, I think you and Sam are really good together. But she also says, you know, I thought there was something once. But no. And Mercedes is like, why? And she's like, weird. Yeah, I'm like, why would you say this? But she's like, you know, like, he reminded me of Finn. Like, him and Finn were allegedly, (laughs) I'm adding allegedly, allegedly close. And, um, you know, he reminded me of home. Um, But, you know, it passed. And, um, he's obviously meant to be with you. Slow burn. Please do in a slow burn. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of basically, and then Mercedes is like, you know, am I pushing too much? You know, and she's like, no, you know, I'm processing, I'm healing. And she's like, I know we weren't together, but like we were in a way we were always dating. <laughs> Which is kind of a, it's funny because it's kind of the glee messy, you know? Right. <laughs> but like, it is kind of also heartfelt true. Like they're always kind of together, you know? And she, Mercedes kind of like, you know, he'd want you to, you know, date. Like you're a Broadway star. You don't have to jump into something serious, but let a guy buy you dinner. Yeah. You know? And Rachel's kind of like, okay, you know, maybe. Yeah. Maybe I will. Yeah. Um, And then they were, so then Sam and Mercedes are at dinner and he's like buying he's gonna buy dessert he's gonna pay for the meal mm-hmm. you know and she's like is this because you think something's gonna happen later well and actually he- what she says is sam you're broke i'm not letting you pay for anything yes and then <laughs> she says is this because you think something's gonna happen later because like, nothing is gonna happen i just want to treat you right you know um which is nice yeah Yeah. nothing wrong with that uh and then um so then like mercedes then they do the number with the confused girl with poor julie yeah (laughs) um and then they go to so then mercedes goes to the church and she prays and she prays real hard um and then as you do as you do and then uh she tells sam she's waiting till marriage Mm -hmm. you know i did like how they it was a personal choice not a doctrinal one yes Yes. you know she's like i want someone who's going to be there with me forever you know who's going to be my husband and who's going to love me forever um yeah and like into but she's like there's this part of myself that's super vulnerable and I don't want to let people in unless I know that, like, yeah, which is super valid. But I'm also kind of like, girl, like, that's the big risk in a relationship is letting that vulnerable stuff show. And yeah. sometimes you need to do that in order to make it to the altar. Yeah. Um, and I think it's a very personal choice, right? Like, it's, yeah. But- and yeah. I think hopefully she lets herself become emotionally vulnerable. Yes, I think that's the thing. It doesn't have to be sexual. Because yeah. she mm-hmm. does point out at church, she's like, you're focused on the physical on the outside. Mm-hmm. You know, like you need to focus on what's inside. Um, yeah. Just thinking about how according to the Catholic doctrine, Jesus has been inside of me because I received communion. Okay. But uh, yeah. <laughs> so, you love to see it. 
Yeah, Jesus makes us all bottoms. Um, so he, uh, Sam is like, you know, I'm a 19 year old guy. Like that's really hard for me to hear mm-hmm. that we're not gonna have sex, but he's not to- like, I thought it was good. And then they didn't make either one of them a villain. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just kind of like, you know, I have to think about this. Like, I don't know. And she, and she, you can tell she's hurt, but she's like, you know, okay. Like, yeah, you have to think about this. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I loved how like this whole arc resolved with that because it's in a shocking turn of events for Glee, very mature of like two people maybe realizing they have different values and needs in a relationship and being like, okay, so maybe this, do we got to think about it. I remember a friend in college asking me if he was a slut and I had to be like, well, you know, we all have different ethics Yeah. when it comes to sex and you need to figure out what that is, what yours is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, um, I was meanwhile, I was closeted and waiting for marriage because I did not want to hurt Jesus's feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, so then, uh, so, so Mercedes is like, I'm waiting until marriage. Sam prays about it. We don't see this on screen. He prays in the bathroom because he can't find the church. doesn't remember where it is. Yes. Um, But so she's coming up and he calls her and she's like, Sam, if you're here to break up with me, just like, just do it so I can get over with it. And he's like, no, come in. And there are all these candles. And she's like, Blaine, did you let all these candles? (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was so funny. (laughs) And then, uh, I mean, we do know he's into LARPing and magic and true and puppets um so then uh she comes in and sam's like you know i love you you know i thought about it and if this is important to you i can wait because you're worth that like you i love you enough to you know to wait like you're worth that investment i want you to do it when you're comfortable and ready you know it's this yeah it's very mature it's very sweet and loving yeah and i wish a fire hazard the fire huge hazard. fire hazard. <laughs> he, did I he say he had a fire extinguisher nearby? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna Although, say PSA for anyone out there who lives in a newer building. Buildings used to be built so that if a fire started, you have about 15 minutes to get out. Now, if a fire starts, you have about three minutes to get out. Thanks. I hate it. Yep. What okay, so, explain. Uh just because of the difference in building materials. Mm. Um like from the 40s ignite. to yep. Yep. It's like a flash fire, basically. Um, so do not stop to grab your laptop. That is my but it's got everything. Device. I it's know. got everything. It's got my screen. Blade. Don't do it. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Climbing in it's your just, ears. Yeah. It's just getting real derailed. I'm so sorry, guys. Okay. Glee is all about getting derailed. Yeah. It's about the it's friends about we made the along the way. Yeah. yeah. And the Could pod I... kittens. The pod kitten. Um. Anyway. So. Um. They. Uh. They decide. You know. They're gonna wait. Yeah. Um. Great. Uh, so that's really the episode. It was an episode. It was an episode. It was it was content. Yeah. And I guess it was a story. Each one had a beginning, middle, and end. Yep. And there was some music in there. Mm-hmm. Everyone had a number or a song. <sighs> this show. This show does not this know what show. it is at this point. It does not. I it do does. think this is kind of the lowest point of the show. Absolutely. Um, I think they're trying to recover from season 5A mm-hmm. and they made the wrong choice. Made a lot of wrong choices. Um, okay, I just had this idea. Okay. What if the cast graduates end of season three, right? Yeah. What if they like either run a summer camp? Yeah. Or do some kind of glee tour? See, that would make sense. And they actually did a Glee tour in real life. Yeah, so you could do something where you get to explain why these characters are all still together, give them a goal. Yeah. A goal that would, like, make sense. Yeah. It was very high school musical. Because don't they go to summer camp? 
they all get summer jobs at the same summer or something club. summer and there's camp rock and then there's camp rock yeah and now there's high school musical the musical the series season three which is set at theater camp i did not know that featuring songs from camp rock and frozen oh hell yeah and the girl from the zombies franchise incredible but olivia rodrigo is only a recurring cast member she is stepping back and what the hell are we doing i mean can we blame her no, no she's a huge pop star of course but as yeah. like the one person in this world who probably cares more about high school musical the musical the series than i like <laughs> ghost music i'm disappointed yeah because she is the anti-rachel barry got it she's the theater girl who's a good person um what a concept yeah so okay i guess that's the episode that's the episode who is your lvp um so to be honest i really wanted to put blaine mm-hmm. uh, this cat this cat is now <laughs> on top of my headphones i'm really scared he's gonna fall um anyway to be honest i really wanted to put blaine as the lvp because like God, don't hold on to them <laughs> oh, God. did you hear that little meow yes <laughs> <laughs> you need to send a picture of this cat for our social media. Yeah. I absolutely I'll try and put him back on my head and get a picture uh, yes. <laughs> for your social media. But yes, buddy. Um but yeah, I wanted to put Blaine because as we've said, like just complete assassination and like ruination of his character development as we've seen it over the last four years. Um, and also just like really toxic. But at the same time, I was like. He's got a genuine, like, like dysmorphic, like insecure issue going on. And he's 19 and doesn't know how to handle it. So I feel bad making him the LVP for that. So I kind of have him, have him as like an eh VP. Um, <laughs> and for my actual LVP, though, I think is Artie because he's just kind of a douchebag and presumes that he's going to get sex. And um, yeah, wasn't a huge fan of Artie this episode. How about you guys? Mm. Yeah, I at first was gonna go with Blaine because um, I feel like a bunch of red flags popped up in their relationship and they mostly stemmed from Blaine. And then there were like some ones that popped up from Kurt, but in response to the ones from Blaine. Like Blaine is the instigator. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think that that Artie is definitely the way to go because he was having unprotected sex and that's irresponsible in a major way. Like, right. like really, really bad especially with multiple people and yeah, not, not good. Not good at all. So I thought Artie. Okay. I thought maybe even Julie. Interesting. I'm going with Blaine. Oh, for those red choice. flags. For, Blaine's usually my favorite. I know. I'm so surprised. But he, the, I want to protect you. Like I want, like I, like I miss you being a fragile. Like, yeah, yeah, like the fuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kids, if you're listening, if a partner ever says that to you, run away. Get out. Get out. Get out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, do I have that uh, inbreeding brought upon disorder where I think there's a glass piano inside of me? Oh no, then I'm not fragile. <laughs> Nope. So who's your MVP, Brittany? Uh, So my MVP is actually Mercedes with an honorary mention to Sam, um, because I thought I really appreciated the thoughtfulness that Mercedes gave to the topic and that she like, I thought she just like stood by her, like what she wanted to do and articulated it very, very well. Um, And then I also respect uh, it was just an unexpectedly mature decision for a 19-year-old, uh, especially in 
an environment where like, as we've discussed, Glee's a trash fire, American television is a trash fire. And so like, there's kind of that pressure for her to have sex. Uh, and then mad props to Sam for not being like a douche canoe about it. Like he also handled it with relative 19 year old maturity. Um, so I was, those, those were my, that's my MVP. I am actually going to go with Rachel for being a supportive Ooh. friend and like the conversations that she had with Mercedes were, was actually like felt like a like a friend conversation like a human yeah she was yeah. being like very empathetic <laughs> very like yeah. you do what uh-huh. you like here's my experience you know yeah she yeah. made the joke about if you have to spell sex you're not ready to be having it like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, uh, she felt like a real, live, empathetic human being this episode. So I'm going with Rachel. What a concept. I know. Maybe she's method acting. Um, <laughs> you know, I was going to give, I'm going to give Rachel a shout out. I think I'm going to go with Mercedes and, yes. you know, Sam too. I think that's big of Sam. Not big, you know, he's he's clearing he's clearing decency standards yes i don't think men always need to be rewarded just for being a good person for like meeting the bare minimum but i think but in- sam even steps above the bare minimum he really does and i think in glee men should be rewarded for doing the bare minimum <laughs> like yeah so often they do not but yeah sam is probably the best male character in the show mm-hmm. at this point yeah yeah. yeah. Moment of silence. Elliot <laughs> slash Adam Lambert. Yes. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Elliot. Yeah. Definitely, definitely the the best male character. And he's yes. he has got like total <laughs> 10 minutes of screen time. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, the music we have "Love Is a Battlefield." I not want to know what love is. Addicted to love. Let's wait a while. I'm clicking on that link because who's? Oh, it's Janet Jackson. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Brittany, what's your least favorite song? Um, that last one. Yeah. Let's wait a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nine it's- two. Same. So, yeah, it was so boring. I couldn't remember it. And you like literally had just listed it off, Cullen. No, I like can't remember what it sounds like. No. I ju- you just remember that Julie, Julia? Julie. The girl, the Julie's uncomfortable. Yep. Um, Brady, what's your favorite song? Uh, I'm going to go with Love is a Battlefield. Uh, just because I, I appreciated the production value and... I'm always a sucker for when the props make noise to the beat of the song. And I thought it was good. Also same. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I actually, I like that song. I like what they did with it, um, mm-hmm. with the props. Like you said, it was kind of an interesting um, concept and in context, it made sense, which doesn't yeah. normally happen lately. Um, <laughs> yeah yeah so going with that one great I'm probably gonna go with love is a battlefield even though it reinforces one of my personal pet peeves which is inappropriate workout attire um (laughs) I'm going with it um in media I would like to clarify because oftentimes you know in real life you don't know what people can afford you know you don't want to shame people absolutely but a thermal blame you came to class dressed like that. One time in grad school, I didn't shave and I wore a hoodie and sweatpants and someone didn't recognize who I was. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, not someone well, in our cohort, but one of my res life friends. I was like walking down the street and I waved and he was like, oh, Colin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So that, oh, I guess we have Tina time. That was Tina so even cute. mentioned? Tina wasn't no. even mentioned. She's not a I blip have, on the radar. I would have loved Blaine calling Tina. I mean, Tina, I'm really insecure. Tina, you, know? you rubbed VapoRub on me once. 
do you think I'm hot? And she'd be like, Blaine, that was so last year at China. But like, yes, you're so hot. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Brittany, mm-hmm. do you have social medias you'd like to plug? Uh, yes. You can find me at BS initials uh, anywhere and everywhere. That's me. You can follow Glee Boot at Glee Boot Pod on Instagram. I think we technically have a Twitter. Nice. Tumblr. TikTok. TikTok is back. Yeah. Um, Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> and yeah, that's everything, right? Yeah. And you can follow me on Instagram at Colin Ever After. And you can follow me on Instagram at a.m.swearingen. Should have a new drawing coming on pretty soon. Ooh. Did you appreciate uh, last week me and Hannah plugging your social media? I for you? did. It was, <laughs> <laughs> you tried real hard. <laughs> we did. We tried. <laughs> Next week, we have. Uh, our seasonal return guest, Emily's back for her season five episode. And we're talking about an episode that I posit. It's the fifth, I think like the fifth one that fits this category. Should have been a series finale. Oh, oh. okay. It's called opening night. Okay. I'm uh, going to pretend that it is the series finale. And Beanie Feldstein. Isn't it? Spoiler. Spoiler. Um, but we might we might see a very beloved character. So <sighs> tune in next week for that. Brittany, thank you so much for coming on. Yes, thank you so much for you. having me. This was so fun. Such it's so different podcast. from the last time you were on. <laughs> like so much has happened since then. World so much. universes. Yep. <laughs> Quinn's off at Yale, not using her train ticket. I'm fine. I'm fine. I posted about that on the Ugly podcast. You did, and I Ugly responded. Group. Yeah, because I was like, it makes me so mad. They, like, set it's, it up. And it never happened. She came once with Santana to sing Love Song. Yes, to stop Rachel from doing a nude scene. Yeah, but it's just yeah. like, when didn't Rachel ever go to Yale? Because Rachel is self-obsessed. Yeah, why couldn't they have Quinn go to a school in New York and just so she could? I don't know. I don't know. These kids. It's nothing. Have you guys seen? This is tangent. Have you guys seen Unreal? No, but is I've that been the told... Amazon show? Uh, I think it's Showtime. Okay, I'm thinking of something else. I was told I should watch it because of my script called Literal Garbage, which you might remember. Yes, and I think yeah. you should. But there's a character on there called Quinn, and one of my best, like one of my really good friends from undergrad and I have a headcanon that Quinn Fabre like goes to Yale and goes through this transformation and then becomes Quinn on that show. Um, and so I just wanted to share that. It's probably other. better than the future they did give Quinn. Yeah. It's Fuck. not hard to beat. Yeah, no, it's not hard to beat at all. <laughs> She could have been dating a ghost pirate and be like, better. Yes. I watched that show. (laughs) Same, actually. I actually even love it more if it was definitely not an A plot. It was just like a C plot that Quinn is dating a ghost pirate. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'm just thinking where that could go. Okay, great. Tune next week, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.